a bop. Actually, it's more of a. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Weird Things. It is Monday, January 31st, almost the end. It is the end of the year. Or yeah, the month. Yeah. At the end of the month. Oh, yeah, geez. Yeah. Everybody get your best of the year lists in. Get your glasses. With I legitimately did a podcast yesterday that came out this morning where I assumed today was February 1st. I, I did not realize that January had 31 days, and I did not realize that I had made that mistake until after I released it. And oh. I'm like, we're going to find out how many people pay attention to it, and uh, I deserve the roasting. <laughs> That's awesome. I deserve everything I get, and I've just been peppered with it uh, all day. Listen to uh, Harris Heller again, the uh, stream beats. Oh, this is good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. We'll do weird things here in a bit. Everybody ready to get weird? Yeah. Ready. I can't think of what I feel like should be going on with this music. I feel like it. It like it's. Oh, you should be learning your letters. Uh, on on uh, 16 millimeter film stock in an urban environment. Uh, this this is some Sesame Street jams. You think Sesame Street? Yeah. Oh. Just cu- I- cut to some kids playing b ball. I think it's like it, it. It's a video game, but it's a mystery. But all the characters are animals. Oh, <laughs> like so, it's kind yeah. of a who done it. We're building a town. We're building a town. You think you're building a town? Mm. But we don't know what's coming. Yeah. Oh, this is the good days. These are oh, the this is when times. everybody's getting along and like you know, you're finding out that like oh I have a pickaxe and you have I don't know a thing that. Somebody with a pickaxe would need <laughs> a, a, a shovel. A shovel. A shovel. Yeah, you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm the shovel barrel. guy. And, yeah, <laughs> that's it. An ore rights contract. <laughs> exactly. An ore. Uh, yeah. You have a pickaxe, and I have an ore rights the contract. The rights to the ores at this. And subject. I'm unionizing. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, very cool. I think we are. Uh, uh, good to go on this side. Oh yeah. How are things over in Breakfast Station? Good. Okay. Good. Good. Alrighty. Uh, breakfast Station, a completely new term that we've never used before, but we all got it. Have we? Wait, is that a thing that we've used before? No. Oh, good. Yeah, just, That's good. I like off it. the dome. Breakfast Station. Off the yeah. Dome. Hello. Man, we get merchandise that. <laughs> Breakfast station T-shirts uh, and mugs. We could franchise that. Yeah. Open your own breakfast station. Uh, only a million dollars to get started. <laughs> That's right. That'd be, that'd be wiz- wizard, guys. That'd be wizard. <laughs> it would be pretty wizard. That'd be so wizard. Just pondering Just your orb and... It'd be mad wizard. I, I like imagine Sauron. this in a, in a uh, Boba Fett discussion, you know, for the show. It's like, you know... Wizard, you know, it's a word we could use. And Power was like, he's still trying to make wizard happen. <laughs> oh, geez. But that's all he wants is just do it. We were having a conversation, I think it was on the Great Night podcast, about how, or on the, on the Patreon, about how, do, do you think that George Lucas was pissed that after Return of the Jedi, more people didn't like uh, uh, protest the government. No, pro- protest the Vietnam War. The Vietnam War. <laughs> yeah, because it's like it's like like I don't know why Coppola is getting so much attention for Apocalypse Now, when clearly I made the better anti-war Vietnam uh, piece. Oh, like, uh, well, except for who's the co-writer of Apocalypse Now? Lucas, right? Lucas, yeah. Yeah. No, but he's like, oh, but yeah, but my mine made more money when you give me all the control. Yeah. He's like, he's like, <laughs> you know, he watches Apocalypse Now. Like, mm-hmm. I told you they needed to be teddy bears. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you need to make the Viet Cong lovable. <laughs> you know, who's, where's your merchandising? <laughs> All right, let's All right. get weird. You ready, Andrew? I'm ready. All right, I'm country in. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hi. Brian Brushwood. Ahoy, hoy. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi. Gentlemen, I have a little interesting sort of topic to discuss, which is mm. 
there was an article that came out about how voice synthesis is becoming really good, like really, really, really good. And some people have been using that for audiobooks and submitting it to the Audible store, which you're not supposed to do. That's in the the, the guidelines for Audible is you're not allowed to use computer generated voices. But some of these voices have become pretty good and made it through and made it on there. And you know, as this the article starts at the point of view of somebody who does voiceovers who's like, oh, I realized this was a voiceover, a computer voice, and so you know, I called Audible and book pulled. Um, which, you know, if you're a voiceover artist, that is a very frustrating thing to see this where people are, you know, coming into your field. But it does feel a little bit like, well, somebody's just trying to get their book out there, you know. Yeah. Um and it is I would say that my personal opinion of the voice, the voice synthesis that I've heard, you know, the stuff that's publicly available, uh, it has come a long ways, and arguably some of it I'd rather rather listen to it than some of the audible narrators. I think they're an exceptional narrator is exceptional, and that's harder to match. It'll be possible someday, but uh, there's a lot of low quality human narration on Audible. And it's like I don't have a problem with it. I'd like to hear your take. Uh, well, what's amazing to me is that there's some incredible low quality audio that isn't even allowed to be on Audible. Like, for example, uh, the there's a Peter F. Hamilton uh, audiobook that I listened to, um, and it was only years later that I tried to find it that I realized it was not on Audible. In fact, it was not anywhere. All the comments I could find were that, uh, man, this should really be an audiobook. And I'm like, but I definitely listened to the whole thing. And it turns out what I had listened to was a bootleg, uh, this is back in my pre-reform uh, piracy days, of, uh, of, of, of books uh, uh, read for the blind, which is a totally different oh, service yeah. than Audible. And it's like, meanwhile, uh, uh, if, like, I understand that, that a brand connotes a certain level of quality and maybe Audible or Amazon is uncomfortable. Like, we'd rather not have it than have it be subpar quality. And we are afraid that robot voices will sound that way. But it's like, make, make a new vertical, make a new... Uh, br sub brand or or something call it call it uh, 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 barely listenable uh, I mean I, I I think that there is obviously uh, uh, with the tools to be able to make things that are of a certain level of quality then I can understand from the author's perspective wanting to get it out there. I very much understand from the voiceover uh, uh, artist idea that that you want to keep the robots at bay for as long as you are are able to. You know, before we started, I saw a thing that was uh, uh, suggested to me on Reddit that was like, uh, if the whole world went vegan, there would only need to be one fifth of the amount of farmland that we currently occupy. And it's like, and it was written in a positive way because it's Reddit, but it's like. Man, I know a way to have every farmer be very, uh, 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 you know, crusading against the concept of veganism if you're going to push those ideas. Everybody looks out for number one when it comes to being able to do this for as long as possible. I don't, I don't uh, uh, blame Audible, though, for keeping a certain level of, 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 of quality there, even if I do agree with you, Andrew, that like, hey, especially for some books that, are, that don't have the uh, uh, kind of budget for a, a, a audio book? Like, would I like the option to convert my, you know, hit a boop button and just convert my ebook to something that is procedurally read? Yeah. Uh, do, do they not have that feature right now? If you get a book on Kindle, is there, is there no have a robot read this to me? I think there is, right? They, they'd, had, they'd had a feature in Kindle and then it got pulled because the publishers are frustrated because their argument was, this impedes upon audiobooks. And Amazon's argument at the time was no, the quality is not that good. Nobody's going to prefer this over a human voice, which I'm like, you know, at the time, I'm like, I'm like, yes, in 2015, or like, you are correct. This will not be correct going forward. And so publishers were fearful of, well, if this gets better, then yeah, it could negate the need for an audiobook because it will get good. Like, it is. The voice quality, if you go look at what can be done now, is except is getting better and better and better. And you can listen to passages. And I challenge people sometimes. I'm like, I will find, and again, I'm not going to compare it to like great people like Scott Brick or, 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 you know, a lot of them are great. They just don't put everything into it sometimes, but like put it and compare it against somebody's great. But there's a lot of audible there that you go like, this was recorded in like one shot and the person didn't even enunciate. 
And I could compare that with some of these computer generated ones, and I guarantee you there'd be a lot of instances where people prefer the computer generated. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you one instance uh, that is automatic code for, well, I, I would say 80% of the time, this is automatic code for, man, I wish it was a robot, and that's called Read for You by the Author. <laughs> <laughs> Almost universally, I, I skip those audio books. You know, there's, um, oh, man, I, and his name escapes me, but he does great work with nonfiction. Uh, often covering entertainment and and television and movies uh, that is all done from the first person perspective. So like he writes intros and outros to various like stories. And then from there, it is all the like raw quotes of the people that were involved in it. And so he's done stuff with ESPN and CAA, the beginning of the agency. And his new book is about HBO and I'm I'm looking forward to listening to it, but if it's like his other books, there's one male voice and one female voice, and they just kind of go back and forth reading all these different people's uh, uh, stuff. Where I could imagine, in a world with synthetic voices, you could have distinct at the very they're not they're not going to be impressions of these famous people that they are interviewing right. but but you, but you, you could at least keep have, in your head yeah like slider bars for for uh, various uh, uh, dialects or, or or hints of accent just or, something so it's like you know because oftentimes these uh, uh stories include five or six people that are all telling conflicting stories and sometimes it's weird for the one male voice to read two sides of a story and you're like oh wait was that if you if you're kind of zoning out like you often do with an audiobook, like you're like, oh, was that this guy or the other guy? I don't know. But I, I think that yeah. there's there's a lot of advantage uh uh to it. I mean, I don't know. Audiobooks in general feel like something that is in due of a new coat of paint. Uh uh it very much is just a scaled up version of books on tape, the way that we record them. Like I, I guess now. You know, you have more access to uh, effectively studio quality equipment since mics have gotten better and, uh, uh, you know, the, the samples are so stepped on that you can barely hear the difference between something that's recorded in, you know, Abbey Road versus my kitchen. But, like, uh, I, I, I just kind of feel like maybe the entire genre does need to just understand and take in a, a, another, you know, where, where, where the industry, where the audio industry is right now. And one of the, one of the challenges that I think people don't realize is to produce a good quality audiobook is expensive. You know, you could look to yeah. putting in 10, 10 grand to get, you know, get a good quality narration to put all that together. Technology could actually lower the cost of that tremendously, tremendously. I I don't know this to be true, so I'm not going to tell people who do or voice of our artists and be like, "Oh no, relax, it's going to be fine." My gut is, "Hey, listen. If we start using this technology from our audiobooks, because right now you tend to focus in that world of like, well, I was up for this job or this job, and now machines get this job. 99.9% .9 of all books are not in audio. They're not in audio. Yeah. And I still started going back out to Kindle and print because I couldn't find things. I couldn't find stuff. And even though audio is my preferred way to do stuff, I think that if this technology were available, there would be a lot more audio out there. And I think there would actually be more demand for voiceover artists because, too, is like, Let's say I do a book. I took, uh, let's say I did Public Enemy Zero, one of my older books, which I had a fantastic narrator, by the way. I don't know. But, yeah, it seems like it yeah. was, there was already an audio book of that. But at, but at the time, I wasn't. I didn't know you. I didn't have you know. You know, I didn't have a friend that had a great voice. And let's say I was able to do a computer version of this. And let's say the computer did a great version. But I'm like, oh, uh, you know what? I it's successful. Maybe I want to do a multicast version of this. Yeah. Or maybe I want to do, I'm going to do the sequel, and maybe for the sequel, I'll go get a human actor or something because I think I could get somebody to bring in. I could pay somebody a lot more money who could do a great job. I think that the fact that celebrities do voiceover tells you there is a value to having a human in, in there, even though those celebrities, I think, do often do, some are great, some do good, but they just have a neat voice, and you like that. But I think a lot of your voiceover artists are way better than your average celebrity narrator, but it just shows you that, there are places where we love to have a human. We love to have a human do it. I, I think audio Even is... Even if the human isn't as good. Audio is such a personal medium that I do think, you know, uh, even where we are on the, on, on, on the technology curve, we will want to connect with a very well-done audio presentation by a human more than a machine for the... For, 
at least, you know, uh, 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 I'm going to say the foreseeable future, which is what I'm going to double in for five to six years. Uh, that being said, I mean, I think there's no reason why this has to be an either or. Like, there's no reason why you can't have a dominant voice, especially in some stories that are first person or that are largely reliant on narration that also use synthetic voices for some of the character stuff or uh, 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 things like that to make things richer. See, I'm, I'm already over the hump. Uh, it, uh, the synthetic voices, uh, let's say I'm out for a walk or a jog or something like that. Uh, I think New York Times has an audio version of every single one of their articles that uh, uh, while I'm on the move, I could just hit play and that article's done. I'll walk for a little bit, find some else, hit play. Uh, it is maybe three or four sentences to recalibrate my brain and then I'm no longer paying attention. Well, but I, I guess just, it's as though I'm reading. It. And I think so. So there is let me let me let me draw a line. Uh, when I'm doing research for, let's say, like Raise the Dead, where none of these books are in are in audio. Right. Like and I have uh, for whatever reason, my brain is just too ADD to read things unless I'm very much focusing on them. I would love for all these things to be in audio. And I don't care if it was. Mr. Roboto reading them to me like I just need the information in my brain because it's the information that I care about in performancey kind of stuff so it's like for nonfiction, yeah I, I think that that unless the 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 narration is distractingly awful and it's pulling me out of the story you can get away with something a little bit more stretched out for Game of Thrones, like for me, like like Game of Thrones was an audio experience that I treasured because of the the performance of it until the fifth book, and then but and it sucked, right? Like right. It, it, and it was it, the, it, it was took same, something off. It was the same guy, but he was just old enough that he forgot what he, voice goes where. I, apparently, they switched the voice of Daenerys. Yeah, yeah, no, it was very weird, very odd. I I would say there's a and that's one of the challenges too is that there have been audio books that like. Big authors, they put out an audio book and I listen like, man, I cannot, this voice does not work for me. It's really distracting. I can, I'm not going to be able to listen to this. And sometimes you get the reviews and you'll get like, love the book, hate the performance. And part of the problem to protect artists is like you have a contract where you put a book out and often it's not easy. Like if you use like one of Audible, like find, get a narrator through Audible has a program called ADX. If you find an, a narrator through there, you're kind of locked into them. And if they do a so-so job and they deliver and I have friends that have put books out using that that regret it because they have the narration was sort of subpar, you know, human doing subpar narration, and they're stuck with that forever or until for some long period of time. And I think that's that's another sort of frustrating thing is that the quality of the book can be affected, the audio version, and you can get locked into it where uh, it's it's a challenge. I've sent Bryce a link, though. Uh, Google for Google Play has a thing that will automatically format a book into uh, a narrated version of this. And we have a sample from Dracula. If you want to hear this to see sort of the quality of this is just like a free conversion system oh. that you can use with this. Uh, let's see. Best. Here we go. Let's listen to Archie say something. Dorothy lived in the midst of the great Kansas prairies oh, with here's Uncle the Google Henry. Google to Dracula example. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wait. Hey, uh, Bryce. Where's Dracula? Give me Dracula. I didn't send you that link. I'm sorry. I have a link to you. I want to suck your blood. This is Dracula. I'm. I'm. Powered I'm... by Google. Yeah. Hey, I'm from Transylvania. <laughs> you invited me into your phone, and now I can come in whenever I want. Yeah. I'm. I'm Bram Stoker's so, idea. Yeah, that, I'm Dracula. They have like. They have like the sample, like there's, you'll see some of the different samples and some of them, there's a couple different, there's like way back a couple different texts for using that. Um, and the Dracula one they use, I think a really good encoder. Did, they, did the link not work there or I'm sorry. I mean, I, what did I, I, I don't, I, I don't know what it is. I'm on the page that you sent me to and I don't um, see Dracula. Right, let, let, hey buddy, okay. I'm Dracula. Hiya. So do it, do a search for a uh, Google play Dracula. I'm sorry, Bryce. I, I, <laughs> I was trying to trip him up because it's frustrating how good he is at like getting the right web page. Like, yeah. you, well, like I, I think you know, you, I, was thinking, I think I think you finally figured out the way to trip him up is to him. insist that you <laughs> to gas gaslight him yeah. that you sent him a link. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Okay, the audio book of Dracula from Bram Stoker here from 2020. Um, it should be Google Play. Uh, let me see. I wonder did they pull the link from that too? I wonder if that was uh. 
Because like they show that up in the upper caption right there, like you see the auto narrative books, and they show. Oh, it's it's the if you go to back to the page I sent you, where it says listen to an audio to convert, just click on the link. Go uh, back to wait, <laughs> uh, go back to the page, convert your existing okay. ebooks and audio in just a few steps, and says listen to an audio auto narrative. There audiobook. we go. All right, all right. Okay. Here we go. Here is a clip of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Uh, Hold on. Payment successful. Hey, hey, <laughs> it's me, Dracula. Ah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bite you. Drain your Hulk. account. Here, all right, here we go. Here's <laughs> hey, uh, I'm Dracula. Here's Dracula. Chapter one: Jonathan Harker's journal, kept in shorthand. The third of May. Bistritz left Munich at 8:35 p.m. on the first of May, arriving at Vienna early next morning. Should have arrived at 6.46, but train was an hour late. Budapest seems a wonderful place, from the glimpse which I got of it from the train and the little I could walk through the streets. I feared to go very far from the station, as we had arrived late, and would start as near the correct time as possible. That's the impression good. I had was that yeah, we were... Yeah, I, mean, I mean, the voice itself so sounds good, but uh, what, a, what a particularly challenging um, uh, excerpt, because th these are clearly just, just Notes. fragments... That, that that this is actually a case where I desperately would want an interpreter to make it clear like these are half formed thoughts and, yeah and and uh, and uh, if, yeah uh, I, I, I may be walking back my enthusiasm well no I mean I, I think that that there really is and again this this kind of comes to the evolving medium of audio right like we we had very very defined lanes for audio entertainment for years and years and years, right? It was, you know, music, which is its own thing, uh, audio books, radio. Right. And, and, and like old radio time is, mysteries. Radio is ephemeral. Audio books are things that you buy that are very expensive and they come in many different things. So you are very dedicated to listening to it. It is a specialized audience. And now that all these kind of walls have fallen down, I think that you're seeing more natural, you know, uh, different genres where it's like for Dracula, I ain't never read Dracula. Would I like to just mainline Dracula into my head as fast as possible and play it on three X speed uh, and make it as easy and free as possible? Yeah. And, and does that give me that opportunity as opposed to wasting a credit on it on, on audible? Yeah. So it's like, I, I see a world where that stuff where exactly that is very valuable. Yeah. And that to the point too is that's that technology you heard is the production easy for them to deploy version of 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 text to speech that's hey yeah just upload your book we'll do this for free. Where the stuff is if you look at some of the research papers and stuff coming out where it looks at longer passages it gets inflection it gets emotion and stuff that's what's exciting is that is that we go like ah oh, I should have done this more should have done this like this is the thing doing almost like just doing like a sentence by sentence parsing we're going to get to ones that are going to kind of look at the same way that a human does like, Oh, I need to go up here or go down there. And even further out will be ones that might go through the whole text, make notes about stuff and go back through it. And so it just think of where we came from, like shall we play a game to this, to where you can mistake it for a human. Yeah. Uh, actually, my favorite, favorite. especially in those compression levels. I mean, that's the other thing that you need to remember about audiobooks is that like they are, very, 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 very compressed because it's long, gigantic files that they are trying to make as small as possible. You know, it's not as small as possible is our love for all of you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Quite the opposite, Andrew. Our love for everyone is quite large. Ever, However, ever flowing. Uh, there's only one way that you can make our hearts swell even more, and that's by giving us some cool hard cash. That's right, this is a cash grab. Cash grab. Head yeah. on over to patreon.com slash weird things and get in on that cash grab. Exactly. If you become a patron who we love, we love all of you very specifically. So uh, you go over there, you become a patron and you uh, uh, make sure that you get the after things podcast before anybody else. And mostly, mostly know when you rest your eyes at night that we love you. Cash grab. We love you. Cash There's love. Grab. There's a lot of love here. A lot of love, and it's radiating around the world. Cash grab. <laughs> uh, 
did we talk about, um, I think last week we talked a bit about the kind of a, some interesting sort of milestones in space, particularly, and, and some of the kind of cool things that are going on that are a way outside as far as like the company that's working on the single stage to orbit. We talked about spin launch. And then there's been uh, kind of some really cool heat as far as like what's happening in sort of the race towards space. And one of the things that's interesting is that like SpaceX says they're going to try to do 50 launches this year and basically like one a week. That's which, remarkable. That's I mean, a lot that's, of that's a lot of hooch. Holy crap. So, I mean, I guess if they're doing one a week, that means that they're booked for 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 one a week, right? Like, like that is that is that is a busy dance card for old old SpaceX. I mean, the I mean, their goal, of course, I'm I'm certain, is to get to one a day. And I'll tell you, <laughs> imagine, like like there's every probability that we will live to see the day where multiple launches from the same company happen the same day, which. At, if you think about with airplanes, is totally unremarkable a thing to say, you know, where they run thousands of flights every single day. Uh, but uh, but but could you imagine just like SpaceX, just like, a, yeah, we got three today. It's a busy day. Yeah. I mean, I guess the question would be, you know, rocket launches tend to be fairly weather dependent, right? So, oh, yeah. What? And then you would, you would have multiple locations uh, where, where it's like, uh, Hey man, we'll get. Hey buddy, get at the back of the line. We'll get yours up as soon as this, this storm passes. Meanwhile, we're running four of them today on the west coast. Yeah, maybe. I mean, that's that that is an interesting an interesting idea to think of exactly how much you could scale this up and 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 what the best logistics kind of way would be. And I'm sure that these are problems that they are itching to to try and tackle as they, you know, uh, uh, uh you know, one one a week is that's insane. Like that's, that's, I mean, I, I, I'm old enough to remember when Andrew and I would drive up <laughs> to, to watch a, a SpaceX launch because it was a novel thing. Now we had a landing, like a capsule came down a couple days ago and, you know, we're like, oh, Pla cool. plane lands in LaGuardia. <laughs> yeah. When uh, I was a kid, it was all this was oranges as far as the eye could see. And now it's science fact. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. The rate is exciting. Yeah, getting to uh, the one launch per day. And then like we talked about before, we talked about uh, Rocket Lab USA and their Neutron, which they're building. And it is it is certainly going to be exciting if we get to the, the fully reusable. That's like a whole nother level there. But I, I you know, the, the expression is it like these things don't happen as fast as you expect. They, they you know, what's the expression? It's like, uh sooner than you realize but not as fast as you expect or something yeah the effect of like red skies at morning uh blue origin take warning red skies <laughs> that, at yes, night thank spacex you. delight <laughs> so I they're both the same it. <laughs> they're both yeah. pro space yeah. okay just, just don't pay attention to the sky is really what the point of that one is is yeah it's just fine the sky is weird spacex really, you gets can just their boil it down space. to the sky is weird <laughs> i didn't realize that i was painting it though yeah Painting it red. Oh. Yeah. Like so uh, in the uh, the metaverse news, uh, uh, startup that uh, called Meta, I guess. I've heard yeah. Of before. Yeah. A little, I've little never heard of them before. They kind of came out of nowhere, didn't they? Yeah. They, uh, they Facebook, uh, the, the, the company formerly known as Facebook, everybody has to use that joke now. Um, uh, basically, they announced 3D avatars that will work across Facebook, Messenger, and Instagram. So the idea that you could have your avatar that's going to be you, and so whatever platform you're on will be there. Yeah. And so that's part of their idea of how they want to, you know, unite one world of 3D images and world together under uh, one company. Uh, I'll tell Look you what, um, you know, uh, th this is another case. I'm sort of like, you know, keeping a radar out for uh, legitimate uses for ah! NFTs that aren't. Oh, um, my God. <clears throat> Uh, 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 where's the avatar? I thought you said this is 3D generated. <laughs> All right, for the audio listeners, Brian, what are you looking at right now? Uh, I, I, uh, uh, my nightmares. Uh, I'm I'm looking at Mark Zuckerberg. Run subroutine. Run look human. Run. It's a very realistic rendering. That's what is. Okay, so uh, his what is Metaverse yes. avatar would look it, it, like? It is it literally Dark Mark Zuckerberg's avatar that we are that we are describing uh, uh, right now. That's terrifying. God, what is with Facebook 
that they can't bring in somebody to say, hey, if you want to have avatars that will chase people all around all of your products and you want to pioneer this, can you please make them either pleasing or wish fulfilling? <laughs> like, like this is like who wants a dumb dorky avatar to chase them all around? Uh, it's the 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 people who live on Pandora. That's who. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I regret nothing. <laughs> we noticed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know. We know, Brian. We know. We're aware. Uh, so it's a very interesting take because, like, as you pointed out, like, they're, they're kind of, the, they're the goofy sort of thing, like the Apple ones, where, the, you know, the difference between the open metaverse and the closed metaverse, and the thing that they're pitching sounds kind of like the closed metaverse, which is, well, we control it, and you use our avatar selector to choose your avatar oh yeah. can i do whatever i want yeah you can do whatever you want as long with as it's one tools. of these select yeah oh can i make a glitchy thing like this with an unreal engine you know object character or whatever no that's ridiculous why would you do that and i think that's sort of the challenge is remember you know there's, there's a system we still use where you have like your online id where you use like a, you know your photo pops up when you type in your email address in some places like this, which was an early sort of way to kind of like create a, a, a presence online through different places. And it always surprises me sometimes I'll go create an account and already has my avatar from like 15 years, my image from 15 years ago. I think that's exciting. The idea of getting to the point where you can customize it and you could load your own, you know, 3d object model or GLTF and those creepy eyes are just freaking me out. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that part of the problem too, is it like, I've tried to play uh, Facebook Horizon is their big open world sort of 3D environment. I played it maybe like six months ago. I went and, and walked around and it was felt kind of like they're like a slightly more spruced up version of Rec Room, yeah. but was still felt like committee. Everything felt like a committee. And you look at these avatars and designs and it's like, yes, this is the safe, appropriate thing that we've decided that we're going to do. And, you know, to the point that you hop into Facebook Horizon and they're immediately like, here's the panic button. If somebody makes you uncomfortable, press this and then you get pulled out. I'm like, boy, that that image of pelvic thrust in 3D model. Uh, <laughs> just Mark Zuckerberg is not something I needed in my life. Yeah. Uh, but but well, like just so so here's the here, here's the unfortunate part is uh, we want to believe that there's no way a closed system could step in and muscle its way and become the dominant thing. And yet entire countries for years have uh, just thought that Facebook was the Internet. Uh, uh, there's a number of countries where uh, uh, Facebook came pre-installed on every phone and phones were how you got on the Internet. And so as far well, as anyone knew, that was the Internet. And they they provide a tremendous value there. Yeah, they, they provide a tremendous value there, and and they have done uh, you know amazing things. I think in helping provide internet services and providing you know vehicles and platforms for people. And it's one of the reasons why it's become scary to countries. And you know they they're they're almost like a de facto nation state in the way they've done that because they are kind of the, the internet for people. And I don't want to make this just a, a rip on Facebook sort of thing. I but on on the you know, to your point, like closed versus like yeah, it it. I think if the product were more compelling, like that, that I wouldn't be panicking too much right now if I was an outside developer or somebody working on a different platform because, you know, Horizon just feels like Rec Room. And if no, nobody even knows what Rec Room is right now. And, and so there's a limitation there when you are, when you're the giant and you have to do this, everything has to go through a committee and everything has to go through this. And you're going to start trying to make, you can't take risks and that can be harder to innovate. Um, so uh, a meta conversation about meta is the fact that anybody is talking about any of this, the point of doing it, that, that if the conversation is about Facebook slash metas, weird avatars and their dumb eyes and uh, the fact that horizons is kind of lame and they change the name of Oculus to meta, like uh, is, is that, taking away from the idea that, oh, are they a anti-competitive entity that needs to be broken up, which was part of what some of the popular conversation about them was before they, they did the whole meta rebrand and we want to do the met, we want to pioneer the metaverse and, and bring uh, usher in this, this whole new idea. Hold on. Am I, am I hearing the proposal is that this is like some 4d chess where it's like they're, doing it bad on purpose so that people 
just keep on talking about how they'll not not go in it. Not doing it bad, per se. Right. But let's say they understand that no matter what they do, there will be a cynical gaze cast upon it from so, their perspective. So, so yeah, so so uh, so it doesn't matter how good or bad the dance is, as long as they're dancing, you're talking about their current dance, not the speech they gave five minutes ago. Not, about, not yeah. Whatever they do, do not talk about leveraging ad money across different across platforms a billion people because yeah. that's what actually makes the money it would it would hurt them if there was anything any kind of regulation done to that and so let's put all the attention on this speculative thing I, we are we are the hacker organization we want to move in this different direction and pioneer this new exciting thing we renamed our company uh based on this vision oh is it old, a dumb name oh times. let's talk about how old dumb times. the name is uh boy i i think i want to subscribe to your newsletter uh, mostly because uh, painting a gigantic cynical grand conspiracy is pretty i might as well just label it brushwood bait yep, and yep. you know put put a <laughs> put, put a big <laughs> box over it and wait for you to float over like a cartoon <laughs> character following a pie scent I, maybe, maybe i could think of other things though besides putting out hey we want to build another co we we want to be the one that reunites this next world we're we're already we're already the, the, the big giant here we want to be the giant in that too yeah um i, I mean my point aside like i get frustrated I get, like but the whole like the idea of breaking up facebook is confusing to me like I don't use Facebook. Like I never really go on there. I maybe I only check Instagram just every a week or so. So my friends, I can like something. Somebody think I'm alive. I get by without now they have an advertising ecosystem, but you know, yeah. I don't even use my quest that much. Like you can get by fine outside of Facebook. It's true. It's really true. Uh, you know, it's not like that. Uh, well, well uh, the, the counter argument I believe is uh, there's somebody out there who plays a game uh, of, of seeing how long he can go without using Google. And you would think like, oh, don't use Gmail. But the problem is sooner or later, somebody emails you from yeah, Gmail, you know, and, yeah, but that and so likewise the, with, uh, with Facebook, uh, you, uh, uh, for example, on scam stuff, we, we haven't done anything with it because I, I hate the way their, their system works, but, but a whole bunch of our, uh, individual product pages are pixeled. So, yes. uh, so uh, if you, if, if somebody else, uh, it, it's, yeah, I mean, but, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. But that's to me, like, to, no offense, but to me that, that point in person, that, that's, that's difference between somebody else making a choice. Like if everybody uses Amazon S3 buckets, I, I don't want, I want to go Amazon free. Cool. There are big, you could use another storage provider. If you're the company providing the service, if the company providing the service you could say, oh, right. I want to avoid companies that do that. Well, good luck. But yeah. that's the company's choice. Right. And those companies have options. Yeah. And and, and I, I think we're on the same page. Uh, and in fact, I'll bet we're on the same page that half the people saying break up the monopoly of Facebook don't even know what they what they mean by that. All they know is company big uh, break up. And I, I, I don't know what that would mean. And, and for example... Uh, in a counterfactual alternate reality in the late 90s, imagine Microsoft did get broken up into Word Corporation, Excel Corporation, PowerPoint, Inc. It's like I don't I don't think much would be better in the world <laughs> as a result of that. I'll give you I'll give you an example of. Uh oh. Successful early on and the government's like. Hey, we need you to shed your enterprise division. We need you to shed your servers division. We want you to disassociate yourself from your file, from Claire. Like all tech companies can't control like those, like get rid of Claris, get rid of like FileMaker. You guys can't control those things anymore. Um, well, that would have been what Apple did anyways. And Apple's now the largest company in the world. Wow. And it was like, you know, you think about all the things they cut out, all the things they got rid of and got out of, and they focused on what they did. And now we all have iPhones and that would not yeah. in the nineties, nobody was thinking, you know, that was that, that it was such a weird thing too. Cause like that was the, the pressure for that. The, the, the case came from competitors like Oracle and other ones that were head competing head to head with Microsoft in certain areas and had reasons to feel that they were being anti-competitive. I think very maybe some strong reasons, but yeah, the end of the day was the world moves so fast that, a, a wise know, man yeah. once told me that uh, technology outpaces legislation, and I took a lot of comfort from that. Yeah. That was Abraham Lincoln Maine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I think the idea of seriously trying to break up Facebook is largely a politically driven talking point um, because Facebook has 
you know, become a thing that the public likes to deride because we're frustrated and scared of it. Have more so now it, with those bug eyes and that thrust in hips. Well, and, and it's you get into people meats. get worried about control and stuff like that. It's like, cool, should we stop listservs between reporters? You know, should we stop this? Should we stop like because there's, you know, there's collusion that works on a lot of different levels of people sharing stories or content and the narratives get decided not from some back room people smoking cigars, but hey, I'm going to share this thing with you or whatever. And so much of what tomorrow's headlines come from come from conversations happen in small groups today about people sharing information. It's like, do we care about that? Does that bother us? Because that's going to happen. Right. Right. Do you guys uh, want to jump into picks? Uh, before we do, quick, uh, quick NASA update. NASA is on a star search, and they've revealed the star. Uh, remember last week we were talking about how they had a star in mind to align the uh, James Webb's uh, Space Telescope. Um, they revealed the star. It's uh, the, a very dim one in the Big Dipper, kind of off to the side. Hey, it's leave. Got a, it's got a number Ed McMahon was a very nice guy. Uh, uh, what are they I, doing with the star? I think we talked about them deploying, but not uh, about the star. Uh, yeah, well, uh, they, they have to pick a target to align each of the individual uh, reflective reflectors onto so that they mm -hmm. can use it. And they, uh, we were speculating whether or not it would be, be a big deal or if they had one in mind going up. And uh, 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 Andrew correctly predicted that they would make an announcement, and they have. It's HD 84405. <laughs> Oh, oh, five? Oh, oh. five out of five stars. It's six. Yeah. Judge number two gives uh. you two and three quarter stars. <laughs> I'm so glad that landed with you. <laughs> somebody, you know, somebody somewhere was like, oh, really? Really, guys? Who, like, some astronomer somewhere is sitting and read this, and it's just like, just root, like, why that? You <laughs> should have done He's holding his know. Vegas tickets. He throws it down. He punches out his, his stovepipe hat <laughs> and tears up the... Well, I would say, like, he, he really thinks that, like, oh, no, it should have been this other one because that one's not really that good. You know, like, we don't, I don't know. Space. <laughs> Space is really big. It's a thing I found. Uh, PX. Pick. Yeah. You uh, go first, I got Brian. a big man. I got myself a, 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 one of them seven-day free trials to Showtime that I'm now going to cancel because last night I watched all of the uh, Bill Cosby documentary from W. Kamal Bell. Uh, I think it's called uh, It's Time to Talk About Cosby. Um, unsurprisingly, uh, I bet you could predict exactly how all four hours went. He did this really great thing, but then he was a rapist. He did another great thing, but he's a rapist. But on and on and on, back and forth for four hours. Um, uh, yeah, it's worth watching. I mean, that's a, that is an interesting sort of... That's the problem is that there are some of the people who've done really great things are also personally can be very horrible. And, you know, what he did for pioneering, you know, being, you know, being somebody, you know, consider, you know, an outsider that do stuff, you know, from the Cosby kids, you know, TV shows, cartoons, and as a producer, all this sort of stuff. And I think that's one of the things I still think we haven't really fully processed. And, 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 and to the documentary's credit, um, he flat out says, like, a lot of people didn't want to participate because they, they're, they're still processing. These are the people who are willing to talk while they're processing. And, and yep. you could see it, uh, you know, from people who are inspired, who worked with uh, and on the shows and all that stuff. Um, uh, there was a couple of things that I got reminded of that I had forgotten. For example, um, the, <laughs> I think 13 states literally changed the law on the statute of limitations for rape just so that they could get Bill Cosby, uh, which is amazing, fairly remarkable. Uh, we'll see uh, how people feel about those changes in laws 20 years from now. Uh, I'll be real curious. Especially rapists. I'm curious to see how they feel yeah. about it. <laughs> well, also as the definition, def definition of what constitutes rape changes and uh, look, I, I ain't gonna wander in these waters. Watch this, watch this documentary. <laughs> Says the guy who literally just wandered into these waters. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, hey man, I just pointed out that there's a lot of water just out there. Just cannonballed <laughs> in and say, hey, I'm not here to wander in these waters, guys. <laughs> Moving on, y'all. I, 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 I said that's a lot of water. That's it. <laughs> yep, it's water, guys. It's Actually, it's water. A, it sounded more like. <laughs> <laughs> um. I have a pick. I like Wes Anderson movies. 
uh, if you like Wes Anderson movies, you're going to really like The French Dispatch. Uh, specifically, if you like Wes Anderson's humor. Um, you know, the last few movies that he's done, I think, have have been... Uh, you know, like kind of overly uh, uh, sunk into like like Moonrise Kingdom is is something that like is so stuck in in his aesthetic and and is trying to tell a kind of dramatic story. The French Dispatch is largely at almost every moment trying to serve a comedic master. So if the idea of a Wes Anderson movie that is all about his American based francophilia. Uh, immediately repulses and discusses you. Uh, discuss you. Let me sell you on this. The if you've ever watched the Royal Tenenbaums, there's a character Eli Cash who is the comic relief for writing these hilariously overwritten uh, books that are just trying to use a bunch of words. You know, uh, uh, you know, like kind of like slapped together. Imagine that, but with three or, or four different vignettes. Uh, where it is both celebrating and satirizing feature writing, uh, magazine or newspaper feature writing, uh, it's it's really funny, and and there are there are lines in it that are, you know that 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 stick with me. The the performances are 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 well done, and uh, uh, I would I would recommend if you enjoy writing, like it's it's a must see. If if you just like to laugh at Wes Anderson stuff then then i would recommend it wildcat <laughs> song mescaline <laughs> um i i don't think i i don't uh you know i i watched the first few episodes of um the uh, and now i need to find what it's called because it's a long the the podcast series on procrastination yeah I, yeah i'll check that out too bryce <laughs> no i watched the first two oh, episodes the, of well, yeah. the woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window uh which is a netflix satire slash send up of like a a, a rear window type of concept but i don't know i i it's 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 interesting. It's not like ha ha satire, right? I don't think it's like ha <laughs> so not funny. Satire. Not funny satire. But, but, but satire it. doesn't have to be funny though necessarily. It's yeah. not parody. I, I I think the big thing for me was I thought that this would be a movie because I don't know how you could do eight episodes of it. And after the first two episodes were done, I was like, why isn't this a movie? I don't know if there's eight episodes worth of stuff here. But I think it's it's. It's an interesting conceit, and I would like to learn a little bit more about it. But basically, Kristen Bell uh, plays a woman who is, is an alcoholic in a house across, across the street, street from, from a the girl, girl at a window, and she sees a murder, and she no oh, one that's right, her. yeah, because she's uh, she's uh, a, boozing it up. She can't tell what what she what oh she can't remember yeah, what yeah, she saw what she did. Oh, cause, yeah, because she takes because she like there's also a back a dark backstory of what happened to her kid who is obviously dead, and what happened to her husband who is probably obviously dead um and so it's 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 strange it's just it's a strange uh take for satire because i don't think it's like it's it's really tr i think it's really trying to be concept before jokes so that's on netflix andrew i i have a pick and I want to be very first foremost say that like there are things that i'll be like oh, i got a bad feeling about this but i love to be surprised I love, I love to be wrong when it comes to entertainment. That's the only place I like to be wrong. Let me make that very clear. Otherwise, I do not like to be, don't like to be wrong. Nope. I don't like what is point, pointed out. That's right. yeah. um, don't want to it's acknowledged. It's there. But I do like to be like, oh, this. And I watch it go, oh, wow, that was great. That was, I love to be surprised. I really enjoyed Hawkeye. I really enjoyed Hawkeye. Oh. I, and I remember you guys talk about the first couple episodes. So I, didn't do, I was into them. I, I'm like, I'm watching a comic book, you know, TV show set in the Marvel Universe. Uh, it's, I've never been a Hawkeye fan. I've never really thought the character was, what's the word I'm looking for? Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, 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 I, and sometimes you'll get real comic book lovers will be like, oh, well, non-comic book lovers don't like Hawkeye. I've been reading comics as a kid, been reading Avengers as a kid. Hawkeye was never that interesting to me because I'm like, I'm always like, you know, there are other weapons besides a bow, you know, but, uh, it 
it, in the cinematic Hawkeye, I don't think was enough justice was done. I really, really liked this. I thought the casting was a Haley Stanfield was great uh, as as Kate Bishop, and uh, watched it with uh, with my fiance, and we we loved it. We enjoyed well, uh, it. You, I, you know, you know, I I wonder if that is a series that gets the binge that, bounce. That's exactly what I was about to say, is is it was torture to watch it week over week, uh, although it did steadily improve. Every single episode was better than the previous one, so I suspect that as a binge... I would go a touch above torture for the first few episodes. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know if they were torturous to me, but I do think that there was certainly enough in them that I probably would have been excited to see it build if it were available right after i yeah, want i hmm. uh, compare like falcon winter soldier was tedious and just that, silly that and was... just it just drove me up the wall loki was like turned into the most extended convoluted doctor who episode i've ever seen and i just kind of got to the end of that and i'm like this this was some of the direction in that which was just annoying of like what this is making it not better this really enjoyed action sequences, things like this. I loved it better than Black Widow. I loved it better than any Marvel movie other than Spider-Man that's come out in the last year and a half or so. So, you know. Yeah, I, I think it mm. it did a very good job of creating a fun world with interesting characters <laughs> that you like to see interact with each other, which sometimes is is not apparently the point of uh, superhero shows or, or yeah. movies, uh, uh, bafflingly. And this one, like everybody that was there had a point. Everybody mm -hmm. had a thing. Everybody had, even if they were, were maybe a little on the nose, it, it, they, they existed for a reason. And and uh, uh, I think once they really start spinning the goulash there, and all these characters are kind of interacting with each other, it was it only got more fun and exciting. Uh, so. Quick question uh, 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 before we uh, I, I just want to sneak this in, Bryce. Did did you ever see Angel Beats the the anime? Angel Beats. It, I don't think it's so. a high school that takes place uh, as a way station in the afterlife. Apparently, it's a. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. My uh, 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 I only saw the last five minutes of the entire series, but my kids have been laughing like they've 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 enjoyed it so much. And I walked oh. in yesterday, and um uh and pet, both of them are bawling and they're like, Dad, shut up! We're crying at the end of an anime. And oh. I and, and I could tell that this was some serious business. So I sat down and just watched the last five minutes. And uh and then by the time the credits rolled, I was bawling as well. And it's mm. like uh um yeah, I've, it, it, I didn't have to see anything from the beginning. I was like, oh, yeah, no, I've seen The Good Place. Uh, this is this is uh, very heartrending. Oh, uh, uh, so anyway, a uh, 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 plug for that. Uh, it's on Netflix, by the way. Cool. Angel Beats. That's great. Nice. Very cool. It's been weird. All righty. Good stuff, everybody. We will take a second and get ready for will rock After you. Things. <laughs> we will rock. We will be you. rocking you we'll in sixty seconds. Rock you. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll BRB. Please do. Please Justin, do. Did you watch? Do rock me. Did you watch any of the um, the foo balls over the weekend? I did. Uh, pretty good games. Pretty uh, good games. Pretty good games. Uh, how are you feeling about Le Super Bowl? Man, I'm into it. Bang Bengals and Rams. Bengals, the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh -huh. Have you have you seen that internet meme? No, the Cincinnati. Yeah, this, just Google Cincinnati Bengals. Okay, let's see. Uh, uh, what is this? Uh, so uh, if you if you if you image search it, yeah, there we go. Oh. The Cincinnati <laughs> Bengals. I I think it was a kid who did. A drawing and then got made fun of because uh. like at school and then the internet was like like no this is the greatest thing ever and so now <laughs> it's become the rallying cry for the Cincinnati fans wow. on, on Reddit specifically the but Cincinnati Bengos I love it the Cincinnati Bengos <laughs> um uh that's 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 good uh but no yeah this is great I love it because I'm a Steelers fan, which normally would preclude me from rooting for a team inside my own division going to the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. but 
I weirdly don't hate the Bengals in the way that I hate the Browns, mm. and it embarrasses the Browns even more because this was supposed to be <laughs> their season. Yeah. Uh, and the Browns let go of Odell Beckham Jr., uh, and then he went to the Rams, and now he's awesome, <laughs> and now he's playing in the Super Bowl against the Bengals. Yeah. So it's a real humiliation for the Cleveland Browns, which makes me happy. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, yeah, no. This entire playoffs have like just ruled. They've been it's, exciting. They've just been like, and like every game has come down to the final two minutes, and yeah. so it's like that's great. We just need we just need an exciting Super Bowl. Yeah, absolutely. When is the Super Bowl? Oh goodness, who knows? Uh, when is the Super Bowl? Oh yeah, let's see what series says. Oh, the thirteenth. Thirteenth. Oh wow, two weeks. Ooh, that's okay. my wife's birthday. Oh, I was gonna say we should have a Super Bowl party, but it's my wife's birthday. Ooh. I don't know if I can get away with having a Super Bowl party on my wife's birthday. Maybe if you do something in the morning. Maybe you guys have fun in the morning. Well, we are going to have a friend of ours in from out of town. So mm. also, I'm also leaving town on that Saturday <laughs> to go to a concert in Dallas and then coming back. So I don't know. I don't know how much I can I can. You might have spent it. all your coupons. Although, although uh, that will be, I don't know what the day would be i'll have to look it up sunday super bowl sunday. no i'm aware it's a sunday <laughs> but that will be uh the one year anniversary of uh us getting the verbal commitment on the house down here oh wow I oh was, my gosh i yes. was on the porch watching the super bowl on my on my laptop uh having already gotten the verbal commitment on the house one wow. year ago wow oh my goodness wow, wow. Um. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But no. Good. Uh. Good. Good footballs. Good. Good football times. Yeah. Uh. It's a fun time to like football. Yeah. Did Super you need Bowl. a break, Justin? No. No. I got a. I got an iron. I got a. Like an iron bladder. I got a <laughs> whale's bladder in a tiny boy's body. Oh. Mm, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, a small man. A small man, not, but a very large bladder. Big, but a large bladder. Incredibly large bladder. I think uh, when uh, people say like you got a big heart, like I got like a big metaphorical bladder. Uh, cold, cold, cold hands, warm bladder. Can't lose. <laughs> uh, I'm finding the story on the Cincinnati Bengals. Yes. Oh yes, the Bengals. Apparently. It was a designer who's done this. He's got a whole site, and he just started making these crazy sports. If you go to concussionsports.net. Oh, really? Is that it? He says, yeah, they show all these other, like, crazy logos. He, the the LA Whams. Oh, was and, this? It Was this a guy on? Was there, there was someone on TikTok who was doing this. They were doing, like, these uh, yeah. low-rent designs, and it was a big thing. You If you if you were the company and they made a, a, you know, a knockoff of your Airbnb logo or your the Uber logo then you know you no children thing. involved oh okay maybe i'm i'm, I'm oh. completing another story then yeah, uh something else. but uh uh so there we go no 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 kids but it has become a meme so uh yeah. uh, uh Cincinnati bengos bingo bingo is their uh is their rallying cry joe burrow and the boys i would get a helmet with that little <laughs> with that bango on it Cincinnati bengos <laughs> <laughs> he has a whole section. How did this happen? He's like, I was bored, and you know, like, like several years ago, I got bored, and I opened up Adobe Illustrator and started creating, you know, like these crazy the logos. So, is is he legally allowed to like like what, do, would they come after him if he starts selling jerseys and stuff? Well, the He's been, they've been doing it. Oh, all of have. the all of the teams are not the. The Dallas Cowroys yeah. don't really if the have Dallas a claim. The Dallas Cowroys want to come after them, Brian. They can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, I guess if I mean, you can send a cease and desist for nothing. I right? mean, right. I mean, I don't think the Tambe Bunganeers are going to have any trouble with the uh, <laughs> Bunganeers. I think, I, I think it's going to be a, would be a very interesting court case about parody and uh, you know. Yeah, so. I mean it very clearly is, uh, but it's also social commentary sat satire. And Dude, he's got to be he's got to be making bank for this this two weeks, right? He's got to be he's got to be ripping yeah. off Bengo's orders. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, and then there's gonna be a bunch of kids in Ecuador, you know, the day after Super Bowl wearing you yeah know, Super shirts. Bowl champion. Wait, wait, what is what is is it the L.A. Whams? Uh, yeah, L.A. Whams. The yeah. the Los Angeles Whams. The Los Angeles Whams. <laughs> Oh, it really looks like their logo too. Wow, that one actually is too confident. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Uh, do we have any time constraints for after things coming up? No, no. It can be a four hour after things. Well, no, it's no, it can't. But so it's technically forever. anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, well then, uh, are we ready to do some after things? With the man on yes. the moon. Yes, all right, then I'm going to count you in, Andrew. <clears throat> in three, two. Hello, and welcome to After Things. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Justin Robert Young. Hi, friends. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. He likes to be different, so his name is Bryce. Yep, I have a different name. Old different Bryce, that's what we call him. <laughs> Legally distinct Bryce. Uh, I I would like to I, I I later on I want to get an update from you about how uh, your league is going, and um, I'm very curious to see if we have any updates on that because we've talked about it before. And I think people would like to know what's going on hmm. right now. I want to talk about a I bought a device device device. I bought a device and because uh, I am addicted to gadgets. And one of the things I love is 360 capture. And we've got really good 360 capture cameras for the last several years. Now you have ones that do 5.7K. This one I got is the Insta360, which I like because it's actually got this little uh, a little viewer on here that will show you that you can actually pan around with your thumb and see all around what it's about to capture. If you go to the website for it and you see some of the capabilities, and I just this is going to be kind of a broader sort of plug of like, hey, there's something interesting here. One of the things you can do with this is because AI has become evolved enough, you can put this on the tripod in, let's say, a busy street, and it will record. And then you go back and you say, get rid of all the people, and it will get rid of everybody and just show you an empty street. Holy crap. Oh, really? that's awesome. But wait, there's more. What? Um, okay is you know you can stream you can stream in 360 live stream in 360 with this and like i said you can control it you can also attach this to a cord or a rod spin it overhead bullet time oh, oh wow. that's awesome right yeah she, there's a video there they show some of the capabilities of it and these other cameras are coming along this way but you can see kind of some of the 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 crazy sort of possibilities to cover the image stabilization is great uh, auto stabilizes, you know, when you want to like, just sort of, you can, you can also use it as a regular camera and just sort of like zoom in. We saw an example there of how, uh, this is on a selfie stick. When you put it on a selfie stick, it looks like you have a drone. There's some great footage of somebody like a really strong stick, like doing, sn uh, snowboarding. And you would think that they were on a drone because that camera's so wide angle, it feels like it's a lot further away. Oh. And and so it, here's, it, it just AI paints out the yeah. the stick. Huh? No, well, it's just not that the AI doesn't have to do it. It's because of where the the seam is. Oh. And so you can like you could shoot. And one of the things we talked about before, like where the futures are going to go with cameras. I think eventually Androids and iPhones are going to get to a point where you're just going to have a super wide angle lens, and then later on you say this is the photo. So here, yeah, if you go. Yeah, if you look at the snowboarding footage, you would think it was a drone. And then see if you can find the, the bullet time image on there, too, because um, it's nice because here we're watching. Basically, they captured, you know, you can capture footage of somebody near. And the guy's just holding the stick, and they just spin the POV around to say, oh, capture this person over here. And it's just one camera. That's such a brilliant idea, you know, the, the like, just take a, a thing and then uh, you know the 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 camera itself or the phone itself will suggest like okay well these are the most likely things that you kind of want or here's what we have already identified as being you know compositionally interesting or or, or anything like that and and then between recommendations and your own uh understanding of things like you can make different really cool images and video so i'm curious mm -hmm. Uh, whether or not there's an arms race of people becoming savvy to these uh, tools. Like the first time you see this, it's legitimately like, holy cow, this is remarkable. But then again, so is the very first time we ever saw bullet time in, in the Matrix or whatever. And likewise, uh, Comic Sans was at one point a very novel <laughs> font, which is why it became beloved. And because it was so beloved, it got overused, which is why it became a highly reviled font. <laughs> and so I, 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 I'm curious whether or not uh, technology is just expanding too fast for us to uh, keep track of all these things or whether or not um, we'll, we'll be all like, oh, you've got that built-in feature to this phone. I, I, I think that 
these tools are so readily available that it's less like, oh, you've employed a digital trick and more can you use it in a way that's interesting, right? right? Like, like just a slow motion video that a it's random no person puts on novel. the internet is not necessarily particularly novel, but if it's a slow motion video of somebody that you're interested in doing something, you know, like a, 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 a over the weekend, uh, the cast of jackass was at the royal rumble and the night before brock lesnar one of the biggest wrestlers of all time was there was a video a real video of him you know as everybody was drinking at at a you know four seasons literally body slamming because we man was asking him to body slam him through like a, a hotel table doing it if that's in slow motion i'm very excited right if yeah. a random person is giving me a slow motion video of their dog I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Oh, yeah. I, wow, that 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 panting sure is slow. But I'm not. But I'm not like you know for like I don't know. It, it, it's what can you do with it? And and so right. Yeah, yeah. I think I think yeah. To Brian, your point, like yeah, the the, the novelty of just it's a thing that's going to wear off fast. The the cool thing is that if you see like we saw like we saw some of the bullet time examples and other stuff where it's able to capture you know things. You're we're getting close to the point where we want to, if you want to get into a really cool kind of VR world or ability to sort of capture things and you know, your iPhone can do, has a depth sensor in there that it can capture three dimensional objects and stuff. And these things are getting better and better and better. And you might be able to use a device and use AI to sort of synthesize it. You might be able to do a thing where you just take an AI and you have enough data from there that it can reconstruct a scene in 3d which imagine like you're watching a sports game, you know, imagine you're watching something like, oh, we're going to put you on the field in the middle of this tackle. You know, we can put you into these places and we might get to a point where the way we watch things in the future might be a lot of mixed media, hopefully yeah. in a good way and not like in a jarring way, like uh, the Eternals where it jumps between formats back and forth. And you're like, why is my screen changing? I mean, but I could totally t uh, see a world where, you know, especially at sporting events where, it's no longer feasible for people to individually direct camera shots or whatever, but you delegate entire packages to uh, AI bots that are constantly, you know, they're getting live stream data from all the camera, from all, ca all the cameras and all the helmets. And it just auto stitches together a one, two, three, knowing that this will be a way that will convey a particular play. And it's like without, without any human previewing it, the, it just cut to that package assembled by robot. Uh, I could totally yeah. see. Yeah, you could probably, it's a very good point. You could probably train something right now on video feeds and calls to know when it's supposed to go to where it should go and be able to get that. So kind of super cool. So and I guess, I guess once we get into the realm of AI, then we even get to the moment the ball leaves the quarterback's hand, uh, the, the computer can run the, the simple Newtonian physics of where it's going to go and where it needs to be to get the exact shot that no, you know, whereas humans have to follow the ball, uh, the moment the ball is launched, the, the robot can already know exactly where the shot's going to be. Yeah. Absolutely. There's uh, uh, another Theta, which they had the Rico, the Rico Theta cameras, which were pretty cool. They're coming out with one in like two months, which is another one, which is going to do, they show kind of like right on the box, like here's your Oculus Quest and using, viewing these 360 degree environments in there. If you've never looked at a really high quality 360 photo in VR, I really recommend it. It could be its own medium unto itself. It really can be quite engrossing to pull yourself into it. And there's cool tricks you can do now too, where you can make things near you, actual three dimensional and things further away. Here where, yeah, we're looking at like a, for like a living room setup, which for a realtor is probably a really good thing. But when you start getting into like some really interesting sort of photos, uh, it can be, it just, it's, it's, there's something interesting about it. Like it's, it's a thing that, Never got enough attention to it because one capturing these things was hard and sort of delivering it, but there could be a, a really cool VR for Flickr or Instagram thing at, at some point in the future. But yeah, it makes me think about like uh, we were just watching on uh, the video part of the feed, uh, uh, I Justine demonstrating some stuff. And the real star of the show is the fact that she's in Hawaii, <laughs> you know, and it's like there's uh, much like we were talking about in weird things. Uh, ultimately, it's the story that's going to be king, not the the reader, whether it's a human or a te technological lead. Yeah, exactly. Why why should I care about this? Oh, we're on a dog cam. Now I care. Right. Um, so. Anyhow, I have something to watch. And like I said, I think eventually 
all phones are going to probably be able to do a form of this or do a really good 180 or whatever. Yeah. And you're just, you know, it'll, it'll become so commonplace. You won't even think about it. How much is that little doodad run you? They have a couple different ones. So the pricing, I think I forgot what I paid. Uh, the, let me look, let's see the Insta uh, one. I think it's like 700 or something. Insta 360 one X two is four hundred four hundred thirty eight, yeah, four thirty eight, yeah. So you're looking, that's that's certainly on the high end, you know, for for if you would think about it as like a a fun thing. Uh, uh, but if you're if you're doing any kind of video production, it seems like a, like a fairly cool investment considering what you can get out of it. If you do any any of those kind of event shots or any kind of travel shit, and compared to like a point and click camera, point and shoot camera. I mean, that is. I guess that that, that, that is that is their pitch, right? Is that like this is super lightweight and can do everything that a a you know uh, a, you know a, 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 it is better than using your phone. Yeah, and lighter than using another like like a DSLR yes. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good yeah, pitch. That's interesting. Yeah, and when you start drilling into the features, what you can do, like the after the fact and whatnot, like. Uh, you know, when my fiance shoots movies, we're always taking set photos and something like this is handy because I can just start just put the camera in the middle of the room, start snapping several photos. And I go like, oh, you know, here's our here's our AD. Here's this person over here. Oh, you can grab a bunch of those images later because it is at 5.7 K. Yeah. When you're cropping out smaller examples of it's good and the dynamic range on this is really good. That was one of the problems originally. Like you would, it was very easy for these things to get blown out because they basically were just two kind of low cost sensors sort of stuck to, you know, back to back. And I had another camera, like the view, which was pretty cool. And what that was, it could do, it could flip out the the cameras and face forward, and it did 3D photographs, mm. which oh, was wow. really, really sweet. Or you pull it in, and it did 360, and that was really cool. So I think as we get more capture device, as more devices to experience this stuff, we'll see more. Watch, you know, if if Apple does 3D, or does you know the AR glasses, and they're good, you know, I could see that you take that photo and you sit it down, you look at it sitting on your coffee table or whatever, and you can see everything around it could be very interesting. So uh, I am certain that the fidelity of the cameras is only going to get better and better and cheaper and cheaper. And so it'll make sense that these, you know, have increased megapixels. But I'm also equally curious, once AI really gets a handle on the game, in a world where we just saw the Get Back documentary, where uh, all of a sudden they're able to, you know, just look at your past catalog of photos. They're like, oh, no, no, I get it. I, I, I know what the Google Street View of this area looks like. I know what this looks like. I know what this looks like. And mm -hmm. just, just assemble that whole cloth with uh, uh, samples from, you know, 10, you, 20, 50 years ago. You could do that. And even like super resolution algorithms right now that you could run on your own computer are really good. And you could... You could take. Uh, we think. I think we've seen some examples before. People took like old TV shows, like Babylon Five and stuff, and ran them through and created 4K versions. And if with these things, if you have a lot of data, like you could really, you could take this existing stuff, yeah, and you could bump that up a lot. And I tell people this, and they look at me funny, like, no, I'm like, like, no, really, like the the algorithms now for bumping up, like taking something like I've had old photos of like that I have book covers and stuff that I couldn't find the higher res versions, and I put them through one of these algorithms, and I get a much bigger one. And I've had like media, you know, dealt with like, oh, we need a better quality. Okay, you can do this. No, we, that won't work. And I send them the higher res one. They're like, oh, this looks great. And I'm like, <laughs> all I did was, <laughs> I've done the exact same thing. <laughs> where, yes, it's so stupid. There's people in their heads go, no, it's not the same. And they're stuck in the Photoshop world and not realize, no, this is an algorithm that looks at skin textures and says, oh, there should be pores here or hair and says, I know what hair is and that. So. Uh, these things keep in every week. Like I love to, if you want to find out like what's possible, like type in something like 2d to 3d photo and then put the magic word GitHub ah. onto your search query. And I, I like doing background removal. I don't know if I showed either of you guys, but I made, I've been working on a little side project, which is like to make like really great images. And one of the things I want to do is get rid of the backgrounds, right? There are services that you can use where you pay them 20 cents per picture and they'll use an AI to remove it. I found uh, an online, I, I found a, a GitHub repo of a library that I just run on a $10 server. And every time I send it a photo, it removes the background. And this is, you know, for the, for a plan with one company that would get me 30 photos a month, I can do a million photos in that time period. So there's, yeah, background, there's uh, 
uh, or a couple of different one of these things, which is weird because there are people who started companies to offer this as a service like a couple years ago. And now it's so easy. It's like a one click kind of deploy that you could have your own platform to do it, which is the hard thing about building a business around AI. So. Oh, is that that it's always evolving and that uh, any minute suddenly you're, you well, you're like, run? Yeah, oh, we'll offer this as a service because you need to do this. Cool. A year later, somebody comes out with a more efficient algorithm that one's on one PC and the service where you're trying to charge people $500 a month for is free. Yeah. So. Uh, hey, as long as we're doing toy talk, uh, I think I mentioned before I got uh, that DJ, DJI FPV, first person drone, um, mm -hmm. for the very first time. I got talked into trying it on in sport mode. I've only done normal, which is this very hand-holdy, what's that? Is that a branch? Let's slow you down, buddy. Uh, whereas sport mode is pretty much the same beast, just with uh, fewer restrictions on there. So instead of a max speed of 31 miles an hour, now the new max speed is 60 miles an hour. Oh, wow. And you can really feel the difference. Now, if you go all the way to manual mode, which is where you could do you know, uh, the loops and flips and all of the super tricky stuff that goes up to 91 miles an hour, ah, damn. but, but that's, uh, that's, that's one of those, like you want to log dozens, if not hundreds of hours in the, the flight simulator before you go messing around with that. But boy, it is, it is just a treat. I'm, I'm enjoying it more and more. That's awesome. Those things, it's just the, the rate at which they improve the AI, like you talked about before, the, the ability to avoid collisions is, is, Incredible. I watched a YouTube video of a guy that was experimenting with like uh, uh, I, a thing that I did not know is it early on in uh, aircraft design, somebody realized that like to prevent stall, if you have your wing is actually split and you have like a part of your wing here. So part of the air can goes through there is you have you're less likely to stall. And I was watching a video. They talk about, oh, this inventor so and so realized there was this a method to prevent, you know, wings from stalling. I'm like, oh. Ah, I wonder what happened. And they're like, yeah, you know, every airplane you fly in today, it's a big commercial airplane. Notice how the back part of it splits out and the top part comes up. Right. That's what it is. It's literally that split wing thing that he came up with. Wow. Um, Because you ever notice, you look out the, like, why is my wing doing this? And that's, to, it's a, and it's like, I'm like, oh, wow. And I, I watched like a, a hobbyist who built a, air, a airplane with a very short takeoff. It was like three stacked wings, like really close together. They could go like really ridiculous, like, you know, like, really slow, like 20 miles an hour or something like that and not fall or much slower than that for an RC plane. And, and, but also what's cool is just that, oh yeah, I had it hit the waypoints and you're watching this thing just run the perimeter and keep going around and around. And you're like, that's just like a hobby shop thing. It's just thing you button you press now. Yeah. yeah. That, you know, but, well, I mean, this, this definitely, you feel, uh, you feel like a pilot uh, when, when you're at the controls on this one. Yeah. I'd be curious to see what it'd be like with like VR. Uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, that's one of the things when people try it, they uh, I have to train them because uh, they're so used to Oculus style just being able to look around, but you can't do that. It's fixed. I mean, so so in fact, you it's you, you get motion sick if you try to look around while you're flying because the motion doesn't track with what you expect. And because there are some drones that do that, right? Who do Wait, yeah. uh, 360? Uh, uh, yeah, we, we had yeah. Uh, the the guy, the drone guy we had out here had one of those, right? Where you put on the head mounted display, but it would also like could look, look around. around. Uh, I think those were fixed as well, but I, it wouldn't surprise me at all if uh, if by now somebody has has uh, there is such a thing. Oh, oh, that's at least that's how I thought it worked. But, yeah, yeah, we could you could put the 360 camera on there too. You know, be fun. Yeah. You want to know how I thought it worked, uh, which is Bryce's marbles. I thought Whoa. that I thought I thought Bryce worked these worked these marbs. <laughs> the wow. League of, League of Fun Games, and I'm looking at some of the merchandise here, by the way. Yeah, it's, I'm gonna uh, knock uh, it off. It's called Concussion Marbles. <laughs> <laughs> Marble, marbles, 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 marbles. Uh, yeah, we we finished up our second season of LFG Marbles. Um, of uh, what back in December or so, and uh, we we got five winners and it was great i uh am, am really digging um I, I think we made a few changes with how some of the points work we're giving out more points to more players um and i think the big the big transition from season one to season two both of which happened in the last calendar year was was changing those point systems and really just trying to decomplicate some of the way that the, 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 the stream works like we were giving out a lot of like bonus points and a lot of ad hoc points that just were really distracting for me as like a one-man um host um and so like 
getting rid of those and you know there wasn't there didn't end up being like complaints or why, why did you get rid of this bonus point like no they people didn't didn't care about that um and so yeah i i i i, I think the second season went really well and i don't think we're going to make a lot of changes for season three so we'll probably get started with that here in february nice yeah um but uh but yeah i i we're we're kind of in an in another sort of groove like we took we took a good break um probably f four to six months between season one and season two to kind of figure out changing points and changing the system and all but i i don't know i feel like uh, we're in we're in a good spot with it so have have you and i, I don't want to blurse anything by accidentally saying an idea that runs away but okay. um uh, have you considered doing a season with teams where people could do five man teams? I've thought about teams and it's like, especially in that, in the world of F1 and everything you've learned right. about how fun that could be. I, right. And, and that gets very, uh, I've thought about some, something like that. Cause that would be very fun to do or some, some version where there are teams and maybe people bet because right now where it gets difficult doing something like that is we can get 80 to over a hundred players in every given race. And so that uh, with the kind of duct tape way that we have to put it together there, it's, it's tough to be like, okay, these people, these five people are going to be on a team, but hopefully they're there for all 10 streams. Yeah. It, that gets tough, but I would, I, I, I do like the idea of team competition or some, some version of it where there's, or, or teams, I guess but, I'm describing clan play. Sure. Uh, Cause essentially this is all de death match. And so if, if, if you allowed clans, but, but, but you're right, then all of a sudden it becomes this game of harassment where it's like you've mm -hmm. got to show up man you're letting us down well i mean that, that's yeah. and that's that's the thing is like ultimately it's supposed to be casual against right. that yeah it's so supposed to be show up play the game we're all having a good time but i would like to figure out a way to do where where maybe there's a way where instead of like 10 teams or teams of five there are like two big teams and there's like an you uh, you know at the start of the season maybe you pick a team or you're randomly assigned a team and then you know the 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 left team and the right team are doing their own random separate thing like they I, i've I've been thinking about that because I would like to see other ways to mess with the format and and try other things that you don't do in the game itself would would it be possible to and again this is me blursing it again uh would it be possible to set up a script where the moment they enter a match, they're assigned an arch nemesis, and then it's mm. uh, uh, maybe like tournament style. You have winners who take on, you know, almost like a final four bracket kind of thing for oh. like somebody who mm. has, maybe you don't win every race, but you've defeated every one of your opponents. That would be interesting because that is something that does pop up organically from from different groups of people who join in and play and say, well, oh, well, you know, did I beat Sailman? Because they this person knows Sailman and said they want to beat Sailman. And so I, I could see some something like that. I w and, and that's the kind of things that I would like. I think uh, when when I was being able to call your shot would be really mm -hmm. fun if, if you were able to just say. I'm going to be blank. And then that could even track of like, who's the person that mm -hmm. people want to beat the most. And and did he beat them? And I think that that's, that's fun. Or maybe, maybe you designate like one, uh, uh, black sheep that everyone's supposed to hate, like one heel. <laughs> that everybody's like, well, at least I beat blank. Oh, that would be fun. So you have, like a the bonus the bonus ball a random black sheep every every race yeah. and whoever beats that per oh that would be fun that would be so, <laughs> like, so there's like, a lot like, of kind of like yeah. a luchador mask character who comes in and be like <laughs> you're like nobody knows who it is it could, well it that could that would be that, that would be really could... fun if you all right so you randomly <laughs> named somebody that was playing yeah. right and so for everybody there is a win or loss condition did i finish above or behind this person and right. for the person, you can say, all right, your job is to come ahead of 50% of the pack. So you win if you are splitting it, you know, you are on, on, on the north side of 50% and you lose if you are on the south side of, of, of 50%. That, that would be fun for everybody. Yeah. And what's, what's really nice about uh, kind of this, this whole brainstorm session is that because we have the stat system that we're doing and it's still we're still running it on air table it's still not a total proper uh you know sql database what have you um a lot of that stuff is 
is not impossible. Like before we had done, you know, these seasons of Marvels, they that probably would have not been even possible. We would have meant we're too far away from it. But like so I'm thinking about what you're talking about. I'm thinking about the way that we capture stats and and some of the data, and we we could do things like that. And 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 then you, I'm just. Sorry, I'm stuck on this heel idea because what you could do is you could have just a a, a, a mask and a green screen, uh, and you know, like before we start this next race, we have a special special message from you know uh, from from the El Rayo X, and he's just mm-hmm. like, uh, I hate all you guys, you know, so nobody's <laughs> gonna beat me, and you're like, oh, well, he's a real piece of work that one, <laughs> yeah. and then and then he competes, oh. and then so everyone and you know, just <laughs> we can, oh my gosh. <laughs> It's like it's oh, okay so and now everyone's cheering for when he comes in dead last or these, okay these are very good ideas. <laughs> and and so you know i i when we were talking about marbles last year it was a lot of like marbles and then what are the next projects and what what all flies under the like the lfg, LFG banner. banner exactly and uh the big lesson from 2021 was um that uh that's diff. It's there's there are there are big gulfs between new entirely new projects, and you know, as some of the things that you're talking about have been things I was thinking about for like okay, well it's coming up to the end of the year. What if we did a mini season, or what if we did five days in a row, and then that's its own little competition? And I like the idea of like taking having like the main like having proper marbles, and then like alternate marbles bizarro marbles um as like mini things or little interludes because um it's it's just been a little bit of a time thing it's like i would love to do i have a bunch of ideas for different things but right now i have to be able to slot i have to develop them in a way that i can actually make progress with (laughs) the time i have each week um, God, I got, I got to go on Amazon and buy a luchador mask now. <laughs> I, I can use the voice distorter. I can call I, I, out I got, whoever I, the I, previous I, winners. I got you, fam. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, it's, like, it's like, I'm coming for you. And then you name a particular person. You do like the call out. Yeah, it was like, ooh. I'm coming for you. Mirovina. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, no, I'm, but I, I'm excited and I'm, I'm glad. I think one of the things I was worried about was taking such a large break between season one and season two. It was probably almost six months and and it's funny because that's the thing that i like hound on blaseball for was like right when blaseball got really popular they shut down you couldn't do anything for months and months um but i get it (laughs) like you do need a little bit you do need a pretty significant calibration period especially after that first the the only thing more disappointing than not being able to play is being able to play and everything breaking and everybody getting frustrated like that is that is a a real 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 uh uh you know danger is giving people what they want too fast yeah um but but yeah i'm 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 excited for it and i feel like we're you know we're in a groove where we're we can templatize it a little bit. We've got a format. This format works, and um, you know some things. You know some things that worked. We keep them going. Some things that don't work, we either just chuck them or we change them. And you know that's the freeing thing about about not kind of being tied down with this. Is just you can change whatever. It doesn't matter, and people are along for the ride. And so, uh, yeah, that's that's at least a little bit of a marbles update. I don't know. Did you did you guys have a any, oh any no, that's linger. that that's that's all. Uh, I'm, yeah, that's nice. exactly what I, just I wanted, wanted to, to hear. see how your marbles were doing. Marbles dot win is the website. I like the thing. I'm bummed a little bit is that I haven't been able to do more. I want to do yeah. more merch and you know all these ideas for alternate uh, race formats, but uh, just it, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's tough. It's got to share time. Uh, I got one thing to mention before we uh, we start uh, moving over to picks. Mm. Uh, on the Dog and Pony Show audio Twitter yesterday, a mysterious message that uh, at on February first, twenty two, mm-hmm. so two one two two at twelve o one. Oh, uh, if you go to Patreon dot com slash Greatest Con. I don't know what it's going to be. Just kidding. I do know what it's going to be, but uh, <laughs> I, I won't say it because I'm intentionally trying to build mystery. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
What's this water? What is that's very deep over my head? How did that happen? Yeah. So there we go. I just wanted to point that out. Uh, 12, 2, 1, 22 at 12, 01. Now, why the decision to do twos and ones? I wonder what's up with that. Um, a lot of twos. A lot of twos. A lot of twos. A lot of and, twos. It's and not why the not full February? season. Don't be disappointed when it's not the full season. Uh, <laughs> hey, Bryce. Bryce, can you bring that up again? Absolutely. Up again? Here on Twitter, at Dog Pony Audio. The at Dog Pony Audio, which I don't think I follow, so I'm going to follow that right now. Now that should everybody. Now what? Now what did happen three weeks ago on January second, Justin? What? Because the Europe, you, if you read it European, this happened almost a month ago. Oh, right. you are right. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Top of the morning to you, uh, you, you, you jerk. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, you can basically. Uh, 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 this has been the most. Um, interesting experience that i've ever had with patreon and, and i know brian uh as well um specifically with the greatest con patreon because we aren't giving you nothing <laughs> we're literally taking money for nothing in return uh with the promise being that we are working on stuff it is a lot of faith that the patrons have have put in us and uh as we normally update them at the first or sometimes the second or third of every month. Um, you know, I, I, I think uh, uh, this is going to be a special one because uh, you guys are, are good. You guys are good. Yeah, just, you're on just, the yeah, I feel like you should hype it up even more. It's not the full I, season. <laughs> if you think it's the full season, you're going to be disappointed. But it's at least at the whole first episode, right? It's not the whole first episode. Oh, okay, no. okay, all right. But it'll right. be like a cut of the whole first episode. I don't know, man. It's 2-1-22-12-01. That's a lot of twos. Is a lot of what what is it, Tuesday? It's a lot of twos. But you couldn't do it on the second A lot of huh? ones, too, because it's the first episode. <laughs> So it is oh. not the whole first episode. Uh, Patreon.com slash greatest. Don't be disappointed. Con. Don't be disappointed. <laughs> it's a fun gift for everybody who supported us. I, I, have, an I, I have an idea for Patreon is like to let people roll together like a bunch of their different projects into like one big bundle to subscribe because I'm like, oh, I haven't subscribed. God, to this. I would love it. that. Mm -hmm. That would be great. I mean, they only just got annual subscriptions. You know what they should do? Uh, is and also, they don't offer what they you want. to let you do that. They, we still can't do that on on Greatest Con. Oh, because it's like a pro it's a select thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Some of that stuff is behind their like higher processing fee tiers. Because well, and even then, like, I, I would up, I would, I would up our thing. We, if we, we, we were allowed. Oh, we, we need the Patreon equivalent of a blue tick to even get that feature. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, hmm. yeah. Hmm. Uh, so anyway, there you go. Anyway, it's the biggest thing ever. <laughs> it's not the biggest. The it's a mysterious season. thing. It's a whole new third season. <laughs> it's a mysterious thing. It's not a third season. It's not the whole, it's the greatest, not the whole the second season. Third season is about in, the second season. In 8K. N8K. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, say N8K. Things uh, will be learned. Do you, do you guys check out the. Do you guys check out the, the latest list of the Barry Award nominations for this year. No. Oh. It, and oh, that's. Yeah, I was. You were what? I'm sorry. I just wonder if you just if you just saw the that Barry list Awards. So, yeah. That's, nominations. Uh, this is for for last year for for 2021. No, it's for 1972. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm trying to cover from oh, Bryce <laughs> finds the thing. I don't want to snap it, man. <laughs> Bryce, I was covered by playing Dracula. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm looking here. Best paperback original. Now that says Black Coral Andrew Maine. Hey! What? What? Hey! what? I had no idea. Hey! I had no idea. <laughs> Congratulations, man. That's incredible. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Some very good company there. So, uh, yeah, that's Deadly Pleasures. They've been doing this for several years. They do their list of their their uh, picks of the year. So uh, Black Coral, which is a sequel to The Girl Beneath the Sea, is up for Best Paperback Original. For those of you keeping track, my sequels have a really high hit rate for getting nominations for either Thriller or Edgar, and this is would be my first Barry nomination. So, um, That's incredible. And these are for um, m mysteries, murder mysteries? With the, yeah, the Barry mystery Awards, thrillers, mystery yeah. thrillers, mystery thrillers. Yeah. awesome. That's con congratulations, and that's that's, that's some big. old gross stuff, man. Those those guys have been around for a while, so that is that is awesome. Yeah, we've got uh, some other people up for like Stephen King, 
you know. Mm, Whatever. Battle. Hey, man, canard. you got to make way for some amateurs in there, too. I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But anyhow, very flattering. Very, very cool. So, congrats. Uh, just bring it up. Do you so. know when the ceremony, when you might, if you win? Maybe. Yeah, they do it. They do it at VoucherCon, which is this really big kind of like mystery conference, which is going to be in Minneapolis in September. Oh, great. Um, cool. So that's a in September. To, wow. Yeah, I've been to VoucherCon before. Yeah. Wait a minute. That's 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 some lead time on the nomination and, and, and the well, award. I mean, they, got, they got to read they, all they, the books. They take it oh, seriously. Oh, yeah. crap. That would be voting, that would be yeah. kind of crass to, to give everyone like one week. <laughs> well, no, I mean I think like like with like Oscar stuff, like usually it's like you're watching it and then like the yeah. subsection of the like the nominations are from from within, so they yeah. presumably have already watched. Yeah, you know, that's why they do all the for your consideration. And... Yeah, uh, but hell yeah, that's great, Andrew. It's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry that the lead time's too long, Justin. No, no I'm not saying it's too long. I mean, geez. But, 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 I'm just but, saying but, it's not as short as the time between now and 12 1. But, but, the, but the nomination is for the whole book, right? Not, uh, or not just, not <laughs> just the, the whole first book. part of the, the first whole chapter. Book, Brian. I'm a professional. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? It's a mystery. <laughs> I put out the entire thing because I'm a pro <laughs> and confident in what I do. You don't do it week over week like Playboy does? No. God, no. 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 For the article? No. Because they used to serialize yeah. fiction. I mean, exactly. really, literally now is the only reason to read that magazine. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, picks? Uh, 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 yeah, I guess... As far as content Popeye, the Popeye goes, cartoon? Because that was a great impression. <laughs> uh, finally playing catch up on Peacemaker. It's fun and funny and good. Oh, Peacemaker yeah. rules. Peacemaker is awesome. So good. Chekhov's what? chainsaw. <laughs> yeah. Um I I don't know if you could write a a a twist more designed for Andrew Maine than the thing that they find in the inner sanctum of that. <laughs> um, it's not an uncommon plot in DC TV shows though. The, oh really? The, yes. There's been those in flash, you know, that's a thing that happens. <laughs> um, yeah, that, uh, geez, it's just so fun. Uh, uh, it really is Snyder at, at his peak Snyder gun. Or that's not oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> the it's Pete is Snyder. Really... The other guy. <laughs> it's not Snyder. It's the opposite of Snyder. Well, I'm on fire today, friends. You know, when you got it, you got it. And uh, boy, am I just, I'm, I'm on fire, friends. Get away from the hot hand. Um, coming through, number one broadcaster, me. Two one twenty two twelve oh one. It's not the maybe, whole season. Maybe. It's not the first episode. Maybe, it'll but it, be... things will be learned. Maybe it'll be my pick. But uh, to, to touch on that, there is a YouTube channel that I subscribe to. I subscribe to several ones that like get into comic book history because, like, I actually like. It's for some reason, like comic books and video games, I kind of just I like listening to people talk about them sometimes more than like reading or playing them, which is probably makes me very weird. But uh, oh, no, I'm, I'm very much the same. Yeah. I think uh, uh, yeah. that th those were my favorite uh, Smodcast episodes where for the entire length of time it would take to watch a Harry Potter movie, I would just <laughs> yeah. hear Kevin Smith describe a Harry Potter movie, yeah. <laughs> which I enjoyed very much. The. Uh... The character that makes an appearance in the latest episode of Peacemaker, there's a there's a YouTube channel called Key Issues, which does really good short kind of recaps of comic book history. That character has a comic book history that involves that character fighting in Vietnam. I I, I don't doubt it because uh, <laughs> uh, I think part of what really attracted James Gunn to uh, uh, not only Guardians of the Galaxy, but also Suicide Squad was the uh, chance to do, to use a lot of random comic book characters to really dig into the, uh, uh, the uh, weird extended back catalog. Yes. And so as soon as you saw what, what, what happens in that episode of, of Peacemaker, I'm like, there's no way that was invented whole cloth. This has to be 
a a a you know a part of uh dc canon <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a don't uh, for our audio listeners. Don't worry, you're fine. Upper left corner. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes, and the, not a not a great story either, but just like how far he just dips into stuff to pull things into there, which is just sort of cool. Or so anyhow. Well, cool. you know, and and to get semi serious for a second, like there was this run, uh, you know, in I guess really the beginning of the Nolan Batman stuff where. The idea of like, if I'm going to make a comic book movie, it has to be a serious action movie. And I forget who it was. It may have been even Goyer who like said at, at some event where he's talking about like, well, if you're ever going to do a Justice League movie, like first things first, you have to rename Martian Manhunter because that's a stupid name. And it's, it's stupid for you to have. Uh, somebody do a serious thing where you have a marsh. Somebody is these characters are seriously calling each other Martian Manhunter, and I think that part of what makes Guns Take so refreshing is that he's like, can you believe there's an insane world where all of these characters in canon exist side by side? It's more fun to imagine the world where this exists as opposed to trying to sand off the edges and repaint everything into a gray that makes it feel like a more realistic world. Well, and even like, uh, like in the MCU, what they would do is, uh, you know, they would drop maybe like one coy reference and outside of that, use their regular names. Like, uh, like when Jeff Bridges, you know, says to Tony Stark, we're iron mongers. That's, that's as close as you get to the fact that his villain was called iron monger. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, and the, when James Gunn did guardians, he's pushing uphill. He has the main character. No, call me star Lord. It's a cool name. Yeah. Nobody wants to do it. And now yeah. just unrepentant. Every, yeah. I, I, I like that as well. Well, that was, yeah, that was the, I think, you know, Goyer's really an incredibly talented person. And it was a different point in time, but is that, if you don't believe, if you don't think you can make the world believable, then it's not the world for you. Yeah. And Marvel, I've said this again and in the most important movie to sort of making the Marvel universe work was Thor, because yeah. Thor, like prior to Thor, we had Iron Man. Okay, it's Mission Impossible guy with a suit, and he had Hulk. Okay, super steroids sort of kind of thing. But then when you get to you know you get to uh, Thor, Thor where it's no longer just kind of a super alt history sci-fi and it's flat out, there are gods, there is magic, there's all of this stuff and it works and it works. And then that's how you get into by the time you, you build it. And like, that's, that was sort of what made the Marvel universe rich and DC was hard because DC felt like, well, it has to be like a Christopher Nolan thing. We have to put in our world and it's die hard with somebody in the Cape. And it was just this, you know, and now DC is going there and in a wonderful way. Yeah. And that's what I like. Uh, by the way, random, uh, uh, this is my pick, uh, uh, reddit.com slash r slash, I think it's Marvel is where I saw this, but uh, they had, and I can't confirm this, but it's on the internet, so it must be true, what they had labeled as Kevin Feige's notes on Amazing Spider-Man 2. So this was the second of the web Spider-Man movies with Andrew Garfield, the one that effectively killed the franchise uh, uh, that was trying to also launch, I guess each individual Sinister Six villain was going to get his own movie and then they were going to do a Sinister Six team-up movie with a bunch of villains, uh, which we, I guess, are still seeing trickle out with with Mobius coming out uh, in, in, in the next few... Uh, the next few months, but it's let's just say Kevin Feige's a really good producer. I think he understands why Spider-Man movies either work or don't work, and his notes, which seem to be largely ignored in uh, uh, the so, process of putting that that. So if together. I want to find it, just go to Reddit and search Kevin Feige notes Spider-Man. Or... Yeah, I think it, about Amazing Spider-Man Two. Is that what we're it. talking yeah. about? Yes, yeah. I'll have a link in the show notes. Okay. Kevin Feige notes on the Amazing Spider-Man. Again, I, number one, I cannot, I cannot confirm that these are that these are actually real, but uh, uh, they are smart notes for a movie that wasn't great. And uh, among among the things he keeps harping back on 
is why are you making Spider-Man literally anything other than an everyday an everyday kid who happens to become the greatest superhero of all time? That every moment that you are adding to a mysterious backstory or special yeah. parents or, you know, like the fact that his blood is special is remo- every step you're stripping away the cool thing about Spider-Man is that he is just a dopey teenager who becomes special. And that's, that's what makes him well, and awesome. It, it, yeah, exactly. Uh, he was, he, he, he was us. He was the, the, the reader. He was the blank slate onto which you could pro- project your own difficulties in high school. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, Feige, he, he knows a thing or two. Turns Curious out. to see what his notes, notes look like now. I wonder if he lost the app. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, if he might be he might be noting other franchises if uh, yeah. rumors are to be believed. Mm, interesting. Why did you guys play tug of war with Snoke? Question mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have a pick, Andrew? <laughs> uh, key issues. I'm gonna oh, recommend okay. that that yeah that that YouTube channel. Really fun. Really really good material. There's always something fun there, and I just love watching it. Like, because you're like, ah, like, who is the peacemaker's father? Let me watch this. Oh Lord, good <laughs> God! <laughs> like, ah, uh, the white dragon. Why did that sound? Oh, that's why it's called the white dragon. And you're like, like, man. Um. Uh, so some good stuff there. Also, I better throw this out. I just rewatched Logan. Still awesome. Oh, I, yeah. I, I I must have watched it a dozen times by now. So good. Uh, so JC Calhoun in our chat says that those Feige notes apparently were part of the Sony email leaks. Huh. Um, so if that is indeed the case, then you would get the sense that they are uh, legit. Yeah. Any other picks? Uh-uh. I think, no. I think we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Things will it's be learned. Been after. <laughs> Almost funny. Ben Affleck. It's, it's Ben, ben Affleck. Affleck. <laughs> JLo, it's me. Take me back. <laughs> Did they split already? Are they not? T- I don't know. Oh, I think they're together, right? JLo, it's me. We've got. Oh. We're still together. Yeah, we're still together. Uh, bring me some yogurt. And I'm using an old timey <laughs> telephone. <laughs> ah, see? I need it's me, you. Ben Come Affleck. Here. I'm uh, Batman, see? Yeah. Uh, In James Gunn's Justice League. Andrew, see, I rewatched I it. last night. Uh, I rewatched Paddington 2. <laughs> still, still a perfect movie. <laughs> great. So great, great movie. Perfect. Great. There's like Paddington 2. Galaxy Quest. Yeah. There is this. There are movies we love, and but there's this. There's this. Perfect. Like you can't. I uh, can't touch a thing. Just saw this on uh, at Wholesome Memes. Um, someone dressed up their dog as Patty. Oh, that's oh, amazing. That's oh, good lord. Oh my god. <laughs> um, what one of the at replies when I mentioned Paddington two last night was somebody had cut uh, Paddington against the sandworm of Dune. <laughs> and he, he just gives the sandworm of Dune the hard stare, <laughs> and the sandworm wilts and leaves. That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> hey, can we? Among the Emmy worthy things that are happening on Righteous Gemstones this season. Uh, can we just give it them an Emmy for the best de aging? Yeah. Can, can can whoever did the de aging? Oh yeah. On on John Goodman, just do the de aging for everything forever because that well, looked awesome. It's worked great, and also the for the Danny McBride because that's not a child actor. <laughs> that's Danny McBride. <laughs> I mean, that's so good. That kid is just so. It's so good. And all of the kids, and then like they're but that Danny McBride kid is like. Like he's just, how did they find him? Like, on, did on, he, you know? on on a, on a worse show, you'd be annoyed that one episode out of the year they they just do a full throwback story and and, and not do it in flashbacks. But this is not that show. Those flo- those throwback episodes rule. They are often the highlight of the season, and uh, uh, all the kids. The kid acting is just next great. level like like the girl they have for judy <laughs> is great uh walton goggins judy, being yeah. a uh, uh being a a a a, 
a, you know, just a, a real piece of work. Oh, <laughs> real bad. God, just the boom box. So, so good. There's the no bottle. dong pong going on in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is Uncle Tickles molesting Kelvin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you a cat boy. <laughs> uh, alrighty, we're going to take it offline. Uh, we'll be back in a few hours with Court Killers with our friend Naeem Siddiqui, Kuhan, uh, and all sorts of other good stuff. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Bye. 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 Bye.